Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, missionary from the world of the mysterious and the macabre. Things would be better all around, easier, certainly, if evil looked evil, sounded evil, smelled evil. Good and evil, it's reached a point where these days, to so many people, they appear to be so much alike. Our mystery drama, The Moonlighter, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Way back in 1876, it was brewed and aged to deliver a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability found in no other beer at any price. I'm talking about Budweiser. And it's still brewed that way today, with pride, without compromise, to be the king of beers. The largest selling beer in the history of the world, for one simple reason. That Beechwood-aged Budweiser taste. And that speaks for itself. Hear it talking? When you say Bud, you say you care enough to only walk the king of beers. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Hey, ma'am, what's for dinner? Hey, ma'am, what you got? What's for Thanksgiving dinner? Your ShopRite supermarket has the answer. Start with turkey. ShopRite Young Grade A Tom, 16 to 24 pounds, 57 cents a pound. Or hen, 10 to 14 pounds, 63 cents a pound. Serve with ShopRite cauliflower or broccoli spears, just 99 cents for four 10-ounce packages. And ShopRite jellied cranberry sauce, of course, three one-pound cans for 89 cents. For dessert, ShopRite premium quality Elizabeth York ice cream, one half gallon for $1.39. Start a family tradition. Shop ShopRite for value. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, ma, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. Hey, skiers, get ready for the Ski Show Expo Winter 75. This year, the focus is on the great ski bargain hunt, the best thing that ever happened to your ski budget. Plus a dozen different shows with champion freestyles, films and fashion, trips and tickets, and equipment displays for first-timers to hot doggers. Apre Ski meets you at the brewery for music and mixing at the Ski Show Expo Winter 75. Take someone you like to the ski show, opening Thursday at 6 at the New York Coliseum. There is so much talk these days about the quality of life and how it's gone down. I'm not prepared to argue the point one way or another, but one thing I admit has certainly gone down. And that's the quality of argument, especially between husbands and wives. It seems to me that husbands and wives used to have heated, passionate arguments over great emotional issues, love, faithfulness, even sex. Today, it's mostly been reduced to ill-tempered spats and tantrums over money. Oh, is this our brave new world? Is this what it all comes down to? Well... Stanley and Gladys Morrison are at it again. Well, what answer do you get? I, I don't know. I've, I've added it three times, and it keeps coming out differently. Well, how can you concentrate on the figures with that damn recording blaring in your ears? It is not a damn recording. It is Mozart. I have to know how many checks you wrote this week. Performed by the Boston Symphony. I'd add it up myself, but I can't read your handwriting. And uh, what's-his-name is conducting. You went to the most expensive girls' private school. You went to the most exclusive girls' college. Darling, you've got it twisted. The private school was exclusive. The college was expensive. Didn't they teach you to write? Stanley, why do you become so excited about money? Gladys, I don't want the account to be overdrawn. Your cheeks are all flushed. Your eyes are filled with fire. 
<laughs> it's almost a sexual thing. Gladys, listen to me. But I've been listening, darling. And I have solved the problem. You don't want the checking account to be overdrawn? Well, let's just put in an extra hundred dollars now and then to act as a, a sort of cushion. In the first place, it's wrong. In the second place, I don't have an extra hundred dollars. Oh, darling, you say that as if a, a hundred dollars is a fortune. I never heard you fuss like this over a hundred dollars before. Gladys, we have to cut down. Well, I do my best, darling. Oh, okay. I guess it's not fair. No, it certainly isn't. Oh, you were brought up a rich girl. You never learned how to worry about money. Well, darling, it did seem silly to worry about money. After all, there was so much of it. <laughs> and when you married me, I was making plenty of money, huh? And you still are. No. I'm not making that much anymore. Stanley. Do you mean you received a cut in salary? No. Well, then how can you say you're not making as much money? Because the money isn't worth as much. We simply have to economize. All right. I'm willing. We have to sit down and draw up an entire list of ways to save money. Okay. Here's one. At the club, I won't order from the a la carte menu. I'll yeah, just is... have a sandwich and coffee. What we should do is resign from the club. What? It's become very expensive. Stanley, why suddenly are we... Well, is everything so tight? I don't know, Gladys. Things have been going up, 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 steadily, quietly, and one day you turn around and there just isn't enough money. Why don't you ask for a raise? A raise? Do you realize that... I realize that you're not getting paid what you're worth. I'm not sure this is the right time. All you have to say is, look, I must be paid more money. The dollar is worth only 57 cents oh, now. Oh, come on, Gladys. That's what you told me it was worth. Say, look here, Chris. I have to resign from the country club. I'd take my daughter out of private school. I can and assure I... you that Chris Delavan couldn't care less whether I belong to a country club or send my daughter I'm to I'm sure he does. That's the sort of man he needs. A man who, who travels in the kind of circles where he can meet potential customers. Gladys, you should never ask your boss for a raise if you're not prepared to quit. I know that. <laughs> then you know I couldn't afford to quit. Mm, I suppose not. What does that mean? Stanley, the minister said for richer, for poorer. And I really wasn't paying much attention. I'm sorry. It's the state of the economy. No, I, I think it's the state of your mind. You are the most important man in that company. Well, not really. Why don't you ask for a raise? I told you. You didn't tell me the real reason. You're afraid. Oh, that's ridiculous. Darling, this argument has lasted six minutes. If it goes on much longer, it will become a quarrel, then a conflict, which will lead to a rupture. And before we know it... All right, all right. I'll see what I can do. I know you will, Stanley, darling. Chris, got a minute? Sure thing, boy. What's on your mind, Stanley? Well, I... Uh, just a second. Uh, wow. Well, What's the matter, Chris? Oh, I'm beat. I need some coffee. You want a cup? Okay. Sally, bring in two coffees. Well, my boy, what can I do for you? Chris, it seems to me Yeah, that... just a second. Uh, Sally, make mine black. Yeah, sure, Miss Louise. This one has to be told everything at least 400 times. My friend, that's my problem. <laughs> uh, what's your problem? Well... Hold it. How do you want your coffee? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, Stanley, you're so easygoing. Well, not anymore. I wish I had your temperament. Especially last night. Oh, 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 that was a session. Well, Chris, I simply... I really blew my stack last night, Stanley. And I guess I did it for you. For me? And for what I thought was best for this company. Chairman of the board took me to dinner. We had all this talk about the economy, how scarce money is. And that's exactly why I... Well, had... you know where that kind of talk leads. Where can we cut? And so old man Sullivan said, cut out the research department. My... 
My department? And do what, I asked. And he said, well, we can subscribe to outside services and get the same No, but they can't get the same information, the same analysis. Well, yeah, that's what it took me the better part of five hours to hammer into his skull. Well, anyhow, you're safe for at least a year. But, Stanley, you watch every dollar. Okay, Stanley. Your turn. Hey, 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 old buddy. You still have the eye, all six in the bullseye. Just lucky, I guess. Hey, I see you have a new revolver, Frank. Yeah, I picked me up a three fifty seven Magnum. Oh, that's a lot of gun. Yeah, that's my motto. If you're going to have something, have a lot of it. Yeah, but that's the kind of gun you use to kill people. Well, that thirty eight of yours isn't exactly a little kid's water pistol, either. <laughs> Ah, uh, come on. Let's go somewhere and have a drink, huh? I have to be getting home. No, 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 no. You come with me. I, um, uh, have a serious matter to discuss. You know, Stanley, the only place I ever run into you these days is the pistol range. It's the only thing you haven't given up. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? Well, nobody sees you anymore. You're never at the club for golf or tennis. I've been busy. Uh, Cora May says you and Gladys keep turning us down for dinner. Well, we've had a lot of other things around. No, no. That's not the reason. You don't go out because you can't afford to return the hospitality. Now, that's the that... truth. And I've known it for a long time. What? What do you think you know? I know all the signs. I've been there myself. It's because there's no money. Now, suddenly, your running expenses are draining you dry. And, well, you wonder how you'll live. Oh, it's the times. These crazy, twisted times. Still, we've got to live in these times. They're the only ones we'll ever have. Oh, I have to have some more money. Maybe I can take on another job or something. Where? And will Delavan and company uh, take kindly to the head of their research department moonlighting? How would it look? I don't know what to do, Frank. I'm glad it's... <laughs> It'll kill her if it keeps up. No, you may laugh at that. I'm not laughing. She can't help the way she was brought up. And, and to me, it was so great that, that someone like her could fall for me. And you can laugh at that, too. It isn't funny. Sure, okay, we won't starve or even come close, but she can't have all the things she always took for granted. I, I, I mean, well, maybe it's wrong of her, maybe it's vanity, but well, that's how she is. I understand. And then she, she won't leave me. And she'll always feel that I failed her, and I have. Stanley, <laughs> quit beating your breast and do something positive. I tried. I was going to ask for a raise. Did Chris sense it? Did he finesse me? If it was a bluff, I just couldn't call it. Now, look at me, Stanley. Now, I don't make as much money as you, and I've got just about the same expenses, okay? Well, I just bought myself this suit for 280 smackers. The car outside is brand new, and you know it's not cheap. Now, this summer, we spent a whole month in Europe. How, how do I do it? You're in debt up to your ears. No, no, not even for a nickel. Yes, again. You sold your soul to the devil. Well. Well, what? It's, uh, <laughs> it's not a completely ridiculous answer. What do you mean, it's not a completely ridiculous answer? There could be some truth to it. Well, now I don't know what to say. Well, you're on the right track. Well, if that's the right track, that's as far as I want to go. Suppose you could uh, make yourself an extra ten grand a year. Doing what? Tax free. <laughs> Who would I have to kill? I don't know. Yet. What kind of an answer is that? A truthful one. Frank, do you know what you're saying? Yes. You're saying I would have to kill somebody. That's right. Somebody who is, as yet, unknown. But why would I want to kill anybody? For money. Oh, no. You mean you'd do it for nothing? I wouldn't do it at all. That's what I had to find out. Frank, hey, do you mean you're tied up with... You're, you're involved... Did you, did you kill people? Yes. Yes. You sit there and you say yes so calmly. How can you say this to me? Aren't you... Aren't you afraid I'd go to the police? No. In the first place, you're my oldest, closest friend. And I've taken you into my confidence. Yeah, but... 
Well, this has to do with murder. In the second place, what could you go to the police with? What could you prove? And in the third place, after you uh, think this over, you'll want to know more about it. Oh, no, Frank. I know too much right now. And I don't want to hear one more word. Okay, Stanley. I won't say one more word. Until you ask me. And so the seed has been planted. How like a growing thing a story is. In the first act, we plant the seed. In the second, we cultivate and water the soil. And in the third, we harvest the crop. What we don't know at this point is what kind of seed has just been planted. But something may start to flower when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Oh, I thought I saw a putty cat. I did see a putty cat. Hi, I'm Mel Blank, and that's another of my thousand voices. And that's why they asked me to tell you about lemon mint Listerine lozenges. Because when your throat is hot and dry from a cold, they make it feel cool and soothed. And Listerine's anesthetic medicine helps give fast, <laughs> temporary relief from minor sore throat pain. Lemon mint Listerine lozenges. No matter how many voices you've got, you've only got one throat. So you get Listerine lozenges, folks. Use only as directed. Well, good old Uncle Sam has done it again. If you know anybody on Social Security, listen to this. People who get Social Security checks will never again have to worry about them being late or lost or stolen. If you just fill out a simple form at the Lincoln Savings Bank, Uncle Sam will automatically deposit your Social Security check directly into your account at the Lincoln every month. No more waiting around for it to come. No more lost or stolen checks. No more standing in line to cash them. Every month, the day your check is due, the money is there in your account at the Lincoln. Waiting for you to collect it or write payment orders the way you write ordinary checks or earning interest for you in a Lincoln savings account. Uncle Sam and the Lincoln do it all automatically. You don't have to do anything except fill out one form at any Lincoln branch or telephone 7826000 and the Lincoln will mail it to you. The Lincoln Savings Bank, 7826000, member FDIC. Tomorrow morning, listen to Rambling with Gambling, the program with all the degrees. There's Fahrenheit, Celsius, and there are some others, too. Dr. John Gambling here, inviting you to join me and the other doctor, Dr. Bob Harris, along with Peter Roberts, Jack Allen, Harry Hennessy, Henry Gladstone, Walter Spencer, George Meade, Fred Feldman, and the whole crew here in Studio 2 for our daily seminars over WOR radio from 5 till 10 in the morning. Now, what courses would you like to take? We have music, news, sports, weather, traffic information, a little bit of alleged humor now and again, and just about everything else to start your morning right. That's Rambling with Gambling, daily, 5 till 10 in the morning, here at WOR Radio, the talk of New York. What's a country fresh flavor like New Co doing in a city like New York? New Co bring in country to the city. New Co got that country fresh taste. New Co bring in I'm big city now, but it wasn't always that way. I sure used to miss that back home country fresh taste of just big peas and carrots, and corn and beans. Oh my. But then Elsie Sue, she's really big city. She put me on to Nuco margarine. It comes in both thick and soft forms, you know, and Nuco's got a real country fresh taste that makes anything you put it on taste country good. So now it's Elsie and me and Nuco margarine. We're in a big city to stay. Nuco's bringing country to the city. According to statistics, the majority of all arguments between husbands and wives are about money. Does this mean they don't have disagreements about other things? No. It only means they don't have long, drawn-out arguments about them. Money. They say it doesn't buy happiness. I suppose that all depends on what you mean by happiness. Is that you, Stanley? Yes, I'm home. 
Oh, hi. What smells? Oh, it's dinner. I'm, I'm afraid I burned it. You burned it? Did you make dinner? Of course. What happened to Mrs. Stone? Oh, well, I had to let her go. You let her go? Well, we have to save money, don't we? Yes, but you can't even boil water. Well, I'll have to learn. Look, Gladys, we, uh... Stanley, for the past few months, you've been telling me how terribly tight money has become. Now, is it true? Well, yes. The club, Judy's private school, the extra car, the boat, Mrs. Stone. We simply cannot afford all of those things anymore. Can we? Well... It has to do with this inflationary period. Perhaps soon things will become normal. And perhaps they won't. Perhaps this will become the new normal. Since you are unwilling or unable to make more money, all of this is merely idle chatter. Sit still. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Coronet. Oh, fine. Uh, Tuesday night for dinner... Tell her we'll be back. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. We're tied up on Tuesday. I said tell her we'll make oh, it. Oh, I'd love to play Coral May, but I'm afraid this week is out. I seem to have developed a tennis elbow. But we'll get together. Let me call you. Right. Bye. I said to tell her we'd accept that invitation. I am not accepting any hospitality I cannot afford to return. And you go out and play tennis and golf. Stanley, what are you saying? I'm saying I have killed myself these past 20 years so that I could enjoy some decent living. Well, nobody's going to take it away from me. Well, Frank, dessert? No, I don't want any dessert, and I don't want another cup of coffee or a liqueur, and we're the only ones left in the joint, so uh, if you're ready to go, I am. Frank, how can I make that extra 10 grand a year? Well, well, actually, it uh, could be much more than ten grand. Lately, it seems there's uh, quite a bit of work. Just tell me how. The underworld, the mob, the syndicate, uh, call it whatever you want. They're getting away uh, more and more from using their own people as uh, executioners. Oh, good Lord. What kind of conversation am I having? We can stop any time. All right, let's stop. No. Go ahead. And so, uh, now, the trend is to look for respectable folk to do the job. People who would never be suspected. Look at me. An editor for a trade magazine. Now, who would ever suspect me? Look at you. A research analyst from a brokerage house. Who would suspect you? It's this... This dealing with gangsters that scares me off. You're not dealing with gangsters. This is a small, private outfit. Created to fill a specific need. But still... And their clientele isn't restricted to the underworld. You'd be absolutely amazed how many law-abiding, reputable, upright people require this kind of service. <laughs> you know, there are times, it's unfortunate but true, when a well-placed bullet is the only solution to a problem. But it's murder. Yes. I never killed anybody. The commandment says, thou shalt not kill. You never killed anybody in Korea? Ah, oh, that was different. Killing is killing. But your conscience. Each contract is worth between $2,500 and $3,000. I thought it would pay a good deal more. It does, in real value, when you consider it's tax-free. And uh, you might do five, six, even seven a year. No more money problems. Suppose you get caught. How can you get caught? Why should anyone even suspect you? Maybe... Maybe I'll... I'll try it once. No. Now you can't try it to see if you like it. Once you're on board, you can't get off the ship. Oh. You can understand why. Yeah. Well, uh, now you have to make the next move, Stanley. Frank... I've been on a straight and narrow all my life. I'll testify to that. Nobody worked harder than I did. That's a fact. But I'm... Well, I'm just not making out anymore. All of a sudden, I look around. I've gone through all my savings. And for what? Just to keep my head above water. I've been through the same thing, Stanley. Maybe my wife is vain. But that's her right. Maybe some people would look at me and say... He wants the frivolous things of this world. How much longer do you need to talk yourself into it? Where do I go? You don't go anywhere. He comes to you. Yes? Oh, 
Oh, good evening. Uh, you must be Mrs. Morris. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is Mr. Ackroyd. I'm sorry to disturb you at home, but I have some contracts to discuss with Mr. Morrison. Oh, well, please come in. Stanley, a gentleman to see you. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Ackroyd? Oh, thank you. Who rang the bell, Gladys? Mr. Morrison, uh, my name is Ackroyd. A mutual friend suggested that we might do some business. Oh? Isn't that wonderful, Stanley? Uh, what business are you in, Mr. Ackroyd? The removal business. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember you, Mr. Ackroyd. And I, uh, I have the pertinent information in my desk. Could you, uh... Could you excuse us, darling? Oh, certainly. And uh, let me know if you gentlemen would like some refreshments. Oh, that's so kind of you, Mrs. Morrison. This way, Mr. Ackroyd. Our mutual friend speaks highly of you, Mr. Morrison. Well, I, uh... I have a contract for you. You must memorize all the details. All contracts are verbal. You can understand why. Uh, that gentleman's name is Everett Marshall. At this point, it's best you don't know who he is or what he does or why someone has purchased a contract for him. Well, then how am I supposed to know? The right man? We'll handle that detail for you. Uh, you have your own weapon. I've been assured it's in excellent condition and that you're an expert in its use. You'll be on the northwest corner of Garfield and 3rd tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock sharp. I, uh... Nervousness is perfectly normal. The first time. I, I'm not sure I, uh, I can go through with it. But you can. You must. Oh, this envelope is for you. What's in it? Your fee. $2,500. Take it. But I... We pay in advance. $2,500. All for you. Well, till tomorrow... Mr. Ackroyd, uh, may I offer you something to drink? Oh, thank you. I'm afraid I have a pressing engagement. <laughs> well, uh, another time, then. Oh, it must be the Boston Symphony. An unbelievably lucid blend of brass and strain. Yes, it is. Well, uh, good night. <laughs> night. You know Stanley? He's such a nice man. Mr. Morrison, on time. Good side. Join me. And now then, in just a few moments, your client, Mr. Everett Marshall, will emerge from that building across the street. He's a tall, stout gentleman. Oh, oh, there he is. He has that blonde girl on his arm. See them? Yes. They're headed for the cafe just up the block. And take this key... It will let you into the building. Walk up the stairs. Do not take the elevator to the second floor. First on your right, you'll see the number 215. Open the door with the same key. Go into the office and wait for him. What do you mean, wait for him? In five minutes, he shall receive a telephone call and he will come back to the office. As soon as he is inside, shoot him. Sh shoot him? Don't hesitate, but... Suppose someone in the building happens to... There is absolutely no one in that building at this time. After you shoot him, take the stairway at the other end of the hall. It leads to an alleyway around the corner. But what, if, what, if he, what if he brings her, the, the girl, with him? He won't. I, uh... No, you'd better be on your way. You have less than three minutes. And uh, afterward, get rid of the revolver. Take it apart and toss it into the bay. What's the big idea asking me to get something out of the si Hey, who? who? Who are you? No! Don't! Don't! Oh. Oh. More coffee, darling? I have to run. Well, I know my coffee isn't much good, but is it that bad? It's awful. Has Mr. Soames found another job yet? I don't think so. Ask her to come back. 
But can we afford her? I mean, what about the money? Darling, don't worry about the money. It narrows your mouth and puts lines in your face. But I thought we were having trouble making ends meet. Well, they met finally. Anything in the morning paper? Oh, the usual murder stories on the front page. A gentleman named uh, um, Everett Marshall was found shot to death in his office last night. Is that so? By whom? Police think it was a burglar. Morning, everybody. Uh, the door was open. I, I walked well, in. Well, good morning, Frank. Coffee? Uh, no, no, thanks. Uh, Stanley, you want to lift downtown? Thanks. Hey, what mischief are you boys up to this morning? Mischief? Well, a beautiful day like this, you might decide to play hooky and go to the club. Oh, no, no, no. We, uh, we don't do frivolous things together anymore. Stanley and I, uh, well, we've become very serious people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> I see by the papers it uh, went very well. Oh, yes. I thought I'd come by this morning because, uh, well, I was very nervous after my first one. Maybe you'd need a lift. I'm all right. Well, that's, that's good. I don't know why. When I went up to that man's office, I was convinced I wouldn't be able to kill him. When I walked in that door and he saw me and a gun in my hand, I could look into his eyes... I could see my whole life in his eyes as if... as if we're a motion picture screen. You shouldn't think about these things. And he said, no, don't. And I just aimed at the top button of his jacket as if I were shooting on the range. And I squeezed the trigger once, twice, and he fell. He was dead. And I simply walked out of that room, down that hall, down those stairs, into the street, over to the bay, got rid of the thirty-eight, and here I am. And I don't feel one tiny twinge of remorse. Frank, what happened? To what? To 40 years of education, of indoctrination, of belief in the value of human life. Of right and wrong. All the things we, we profess to believe in. I don't know. Do they get swept aside in the first storm? Frank, what happened to my to my conscience? Where is it? My conscience. There's no explanation, Stanley. Why am I so untroubled, so serene, so much at peace with myself? Is it possible that when we murder another human being, we also murder our own conscience? Because I tell you, Frank, mine is dead. What do you think? Maybe you're right. How's yours? My conscience? Yes. Mine's dead, too. As the poet said, conscience doth make cowards of us all. He's usually right, but uh, perhaps Stanley and Frank are the exceptions that prove the rule. Well, it's an interesting problem. Can you kill a conscience? Or put it this way, in killing your conscience, what else do you kill? These questions require a third act for their solution, and I shall return in just a... Is it a veneer, our morality, our code of ethics? This problem has occupied the attention of scholars throughout the ages... How deeply are we committed to the values we profess so vehemently in public? Some say man is basically evil, and some say man is basically good. And perhaps neither side is completely right or completely wrong. Darling? Hmm? I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'm overdrawn at the bank. I know. You know? Yes. Jack Carstairs has orders to call me when that happens, and I make the adjustment. But, darling, I really should try to be more careful. No. For you to be more careful with money would require too much time and effort. Why'd you turn off the music? Because I want to tell you how much I love you. Happy? I'm deliriously happy. I don't want you to have a worry in the world. Stanley, why is it that... Suddenly, we have no more money worries. Dear, it all has to do with judicious management. 
Oh, how right you are. Judicious management. That's what Daddy used to say. No, he used to say prudent management. Oh, same thing. You know, darling, you look marvelous. You look so so young, so happy, so... so. Well, I can't really explain it. Exhilarated, as if you were having the time of your life. Well, I am. Hello. Hello, Stanley. Oh. Oh, yes? Uh, Stanley, would it be convenient to meet me at the Cafe Charleston on 9th and Dewey, say, in 45 minutes? Certainly. Thank you, Stanley. Darling, was that that very nice gentleman? Uh, I can't remember his name. The one who loves Mozart? <laughs> Your envelope, Stanley. Thank you. You'll find it contains $3,500. Your rating has gone up. From now on, this is your fee. Uh, your client is a woman. A woman? Should that make a difference? Well, I... I... Women have been agitating for equality, haven't they? What did she do? Hmm. Does it matter? No, but I... The very cornerstone of our philosophy is complete disassociation from our clients. I understand. Your only contact with your client comes at the very end of his life. And then, only for a brief moment. It's just that a, a woman... Should it matter? All right. Where do I go? Her name is Alma Watson. Coming, honey, coming. Hi, Regis. Oh, I thought you were the... Miss Alma Watson? Yeah. Are you sure you're Alma Watson? Sure, I'm sure. It wouldn't do for me to make a mistake. <laughs> the man's name is Paul Terry. His name is... Jerome Kelly. He's hiding out in a little motel. Your classification's gone up, Stanley. You're a $5,000 man now. Chris, got a minute? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, hi, Stanley. Now, yeah, look, I'm swamped. Can it wait? No, Chris, it can't wait. You want me to continue here? What a question. I want a 25% raise. Oh, now, Stanley, you know the facts of life around here. I'll quit. You... You know what? Take it or leave it. But, Stanley, you know how Sullivan feels. I only know what you tell me, Chris. Now, see here, Stanley. You can't get rid of me, and you know it. 25%. Well, that's a lot of money. Just for the rest of the year. After January 1, it goes to 30. Well, Stanley, we have to talk about this. I'm swamped with work, Chris. Besides, what's there to talk about? I said take it or leave it. That phony. He's been making himself look good at my expense. I never had the guts to stand up to him before. But you know something, Frank? Since I've taken on this sideline... How about another round? No, 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 I had enough. As I was saying, since we've been engaged in our new activity, I'm another person. I'll have another one. I, I think you had enough, too. Charlie, make it a double. A double? You know, I'm not afraid of anybody or anything. Maybe that's what we're all about. You, you, you know what I mean? No. But maybe... Maybe man is basically a hunting animal. Maybe we try to obscure that with a veneer of civilization. You think so? Well, look at how quickly we pierce that veneer. Uh, maybe we do, maybe we don't. When we get down to it, what's it all about? Security. Security? Well, I define as my security. My home, my woman, my child, my, my property. I'll kill for it. Each man defines what security means to him. And each man will kill for it. End of speech. Stanley... What's the matter, Frank? I, I don't know. You've been putting away a good deal of that booze, pal. I know, and it, and it doesn't help. Well, what did booze ever help? And what help do you need? Stanley, I, 
I, I want to get out. Get out of what? You know what? Fine. I, I can't sleep. I, I see people's faces. You, you know which people I mean. Frank, if you'd stop drinking... Have you seen any faces yet, Stanley? Of course not. You will. You will. Remember that day, that, that first day... Oh, good Lord, how I wish I'd never gotten you into it. Are you crazy? You've solved all my problems. You, you wanted to know what happens to your conscience? Huh? Huh? We thought maybe you'd kill it. You, you don't. It just... It just goes to sleep. And all of a sudden, it wakes up. Well, regardless, Frank, we have a practical problem. You simply don't quit. Does Ackroyd suspect... Oh, I'm sure he does. I, I, I begged off the last couple of... Assignments claimed I was sick. I, I can't keep it up forever. Can you arrange to go away for a while? If you get some rest, you'll see things differently. Do you know what I keep seeing in front of my eyes? Uh, don't laugh. Oh, big letters of fire, and they say, "Thou shalt not kill." Oh, Frank, Frank, get hold of yourself. Oh, I'll try. Uh, I'll, I'll try. You'll be all right. your envelope. Thank you. It, uh, it will be necessary to violate our basic philosophy just somewhat in this particular case. But then, rules were made to be broken. Oh, here we are. No oh, way. Wait, this is the building. This is the building of the publishing company where, where, where... And here he comes now. Frank. He's going around the corner to the parking lot where it's dark and deserted. Follow him there. Kill him. But he's he's my... He's your client. I can't kill Frank. Why not? I... I... Stanley, Frank is being killed for just this very reason. He refused to accept a contract. Now go to the parking lot and shoot him. No. What's to be gained by your refusal? Someone else will be assigned to kill him. And to kill you, too. I wish I'd never gotten into this. Well, that's not true. The rewards have been spectacular. But, Frank... And if it is true, shouldn't you be eager to kill Frank? After all, he's the one who did get you into it. Quickly, Stanley, before it's too late. Stanley? Is that you? Yes, what are you doing here? Oh. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh, go, go ahead. I, I I don't care. It has to happen. It may as well be you as anyone else. Oh, don't, don't stand there. Do it. You know you're supposed to do it right away. Don't wait. Don't delay. Just pull the trigger and walk away. I can't. You've got to. You can't save me. No one can save me. I don't want to be saved anyhow. When you see the faces, do you hear the voices too? Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm hearing them. When do you stop hearing them? I don't know. When do you stop seeing them? I guess when you're dead. Is this how it happened to you? You, you better kill me. Before it's too late for you. It's too late for me now. I don't have a chance. Try to save yourself. No, I'll never lose those voices, the faces. Look, have you got your gun? Yeah, in the glove compartment. Let's kill him. Who? Ackroyd. We'll never get away with it. Does that matter? Come on, buddy. He's in that car, all alone. No, he's not alone. See that car across the street? He's got some people in it. Maybe he felt he couldn't trust you. Stanley, I know it's a difficult assignment, but it has to be done. Stanley, you can't get away. The block is surrounded. Now, you just do what's necessary, and everything will be fine. I can hit him from here. Stanley, I... I don't care anymore. Save yourself. That's just what I'm trying to do. Save myself. Stanley, let me hear it. Yeah, I'll let you hear it. Don't shoot him, Stanley. It won't help. Shut up. It's not an easy shot. 
now. Got him. Let's try to get out of here. They're shooting at us. Frank! Frank, I don't hear the voices anymore. I don't see the faces. Do you? No. 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 Frank! Oh! Frank! The newspapers, the authorities, none of them knew what you and I know. There was a gunfight on the street between two respectable citizens and a group of people, some of whom are known criminals. The story the police seem inclined to believe is that a bank was about to be burglarized when Mr. Stanley Morrison and Mr. Frank Smith happened along and decided to perform their citizenly duties. Both men died heroes' deaths. And they will be honored at special funeral services. I shall return shortly. The human conscience, certainly the most elusive component in man's makeup. It may slumber for years and awake without warning. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Joan Lovejoy, Bob Caliban, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Listerine Lozenges and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next...